This is Task Spoon, the series where I try to complete the collection log one random task at a time. After completing all the easy tasks, I'm ready to move on to longer and harder challenges as I attempt to conquer the medium tier. Welcome to Season 2 of Task Spoon. Hello everyone, welcome back to episode 35 of the Task Spoon series. In the last video, I spent 8 days straight grinding Slayer in order to kill some Kuras, only to kill like 8 of them and get the drop immediately. Uh, we then rolled a Giant's Foundry task, hence why I am here. Uh, I already did all the boring bar making off screen while I was doing some other things and editing and whatnot. Figured you guys didn't need to see that part. Uh, yeah, we're just going to jump right into it. Last time we had a Giant's Foundry task, I ended up buying the double ammo mold, which I have been using rigorously to make my cannonballs for Slayer, so very happy I did that. Uh, so this time I'm probably going to buy whatever is the least expensive of the Smith's outfit, which I guess is going to be the gloves. I can combine the Smith's gloves and the ice gloves, so that would actually be useful. So that's probably what I'm going to go for. 3,500 points, as you can see I have 100, so not really anywhere near there. Uh, I might choose a couple of the more useful molds to buy first to make the rest of the grind faster. But that's what we're going to be going for. And if we go to the bank, this is how many bars I made. Uh, I have about 300 of each bar. Ran out of coal and kind of ran out of iron as well. So can't really make any more bars for now. I'm going to see how far this gets me and then come up with a plan if I need to get some more materials. Which honestly I probably will. This isn't that many bars, but we'll see. Let's just go and start. And a pretty cool level here, once I hand in this sword. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. 70 smithing, which actually lets me use adamant, just in general. And here, now I don't think I actually have adamant bars. I don't know why I would. Yeah, I don't. Uh, and I don't have any coal to make them. But maybe next time? I don't know. So, my recorder didn't work there, but I just bought the serrated tip. And there's a couple other molds that I'm going to end up buying before I just start saving. Uh, and one of the problems is, as you can see, these are all the default molds. And they're all very general. Uh, the highest is 8, the lowest is 4. They all have a little bit of everything. Uh, but if you look at the serrated tip, which I just bought, it actually goes all the way up to 16 for light. Which is, if you look at all the tips, one of the problems that I was having. I only have one light tip and it's at 4. So... Yeah, I'm going to pick and choose a couple of the molds to buy before I start saving. There's probably going to be like one or two of each of the things, but yeah. Bought the serrated tip, going to buy a couple more, and then just save. This is the exact reason that I bought that particular mold. Uh, this broad light sword was really a problem. Uh, before, I had to use this thing, and it was an 8 and a 14, and that just sort of sucked. I mean, now it's an 8 and a 24, so I still need to get a broad mold which is the next thing that I'm going to do. It's going to be one of the blades, I think. But yeah, that that's that's sort of an example of why I needed to do it. Uh, the broad light swords were just terrible. Oh, hey. So you may be wondering to yourself, Spoon, why the heck are you on Yatizo? Uh, I've been doing some math, and I'm going to throw some numbers at you. And if you follow along, great. If you don't, don't worry about it. So I did the math and I concluded I definitely do not have enough bars to complete my task. Uh, I'd like to get a couple more molds, which are going to be about 350 reputation each, plus the 3500 for the gloves means I need about 4000 more rep. I have a couple hundred right now. I don't actually remember how much, but I'm just rounding because all of this is sort of uh, estimations. So I need about 4000 more rep and doing the math. Uh, using 14 steel and 14 mithril, I get 65 score from the alloy, plus about, currently it's about 16-ish average of each type of sword, so 16 plus 16 is 32, 65 plus 32-ish is about 97, well it is 97, I'm gonna round to 100 for the ease of the math. If I need 4,000 more rep and I get about 100 reputation per sword, that means I need to make 40 more swords. I use 14 of each type of bar per sword, which means I need 560 of each bar to complete my task. Now, considering that I started with even less than that amount of each bar, there's no way I'm going to have enough to complete this task. So, what I need to do is either option A, get more bars, which I'm actually not going to do, or option B, 
get armor pieces or weapons that I can smelt down to use instead, which is what I am going to do. Now, there's a couple convenient tools for this, uh, one of which is on the wiki, and it actually shows you how much money you're spending per bar's worth of material when you smelt down different objects. And one of the things that actually shows on there is shop prices. And this guy right here actually sells Mithril Claws for 522 coins, and each one of these is worth one bar. So essentially, I'm buying a Mithril Bar for 522 coins, which is what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to buy about 600 of these claws, which might take me a while at four per world. But either way, uh, this is going to let me essentially buy my, like I said, buy my bars, and I'll get money back per sword that I make. And I'll actually get more money back than I'm going to spend on the pieces that I buy. I haven't decided what steel piece I'm going to buy yet. There's a couple options. Uh, the cheapest one is actually also steel claws at the guy in the rogue's den. The problem with that one is there's only one stock per world. And that would take a long time to buy 600 uh, steel claws at one stock per world. So... Even though that's the cheapest, I don't think I'm going to end up doing that. What I'm probably going to end up doing is buying Steel Warhammers. There's a couple shops that sell it. Uh, some have three stocks, some have two. Some are closer to the bank, some are farther away. So I haven't actually decided what I'm going to do for the steel yet. But this is how I'm going to get my Mithril for my Mithril Bars. Now, there's one other thing that I'm going to do while I'm here that people have been telling me to do for a while now, which is actually buy more bank slots. Uh, I've known about this and I've wanted to do this for a while. The reason I haven't done it is I don't actually have that much money. As you can see in my inventory right now, this is all the money that I have. And if I happen to get a task, I don't know what task it would be, but if I happen to get a task where I need a lot of money, it would suck if I spent money on bank slots and then ended up needing money for a task and I had to go farm money because that it just doesn't sound like fun. So I really didn't want to run out of money. But the fact that the first one's only one mil for 40 more slots, I'm just going to do it. Um, this will help me out a lot. I've been struggling with bank space. I have a tendency to keep all the items that I get from tasks, even if I don't ever plan on using them. But yeah, a little bit more bank space now. So that's nice. All right, I was buying my Mithril Claws and I saw this crash star and I needed to do some editing. And well, you know, next thing I knew, I have 926 Stardust. I uh, got most of my editing done, which was nice, and we can go back to buying the claws. I decided to buy steel warhammers here at the Mount Karulm shop that I definitely knew existed before googling things. Um, turns out that the steel claws would have taken way too long to get, and I can get these at 320 coins per bar, and that's good enough that I will still make money making the swords after buying all these things, so. Bought 250-ish Steel Warhammers, 500-ish Mithril Claws, and we can get right back to making the swords. So as you can see here, every time I hand in one of these swords, I'm getting about 20,000 coins, uh, give or take some, depending on how good it is. And I did the math, I'm spending about 12K, just under 12K per sword, so I'm still profiting. Getting reputation, getting smithing XP, doing the task, making money, all is good. And I can buy another mold for more optimal sword making, which I'm going to do right now. 71 smithing, not usually a level to celebrate, but it lets me buy one of the more useful molds, which I'm going to do right now, called this one, Fleur de Blade. Um, this is one of the ones on the Giants Foundry wiki. It actually has a list of all of the molds and it'll tell you how many optimal commissions the, each mold is in, and you can buy the best ones first, and this is one of the top ones, so I'm gonna buy it. And it's immediately useful. And I think that's gonna be the last one that I end up buying from now on out. Just gonna save up for the Smith's Gloves, so need 3,500 more points. All right big sword here if we go to the shop 1762 rep meaning i am halfway there nothing else to say <laughs> gonna keep going all right this is it the last sword i need to make 
I have been grinding all day. I got to 74 smithing somehow, just from making swords. And I can buy the gloves! Yay! Uh, I didn't actually explain what these gloves do. Uh, I said you can combine them with the ice gloves, which you can, and I'm going to do, mostly to save bank space. Um, but each piece of the outfit actually has a chance to increase your uh, tick speed while smithing on an anvil. And when you have the full set, it's a 100% chance to save a tick. I think each piece is 25, no, 20% because there's five pieces. So yeah, sort of useful, kind of cool. And we can do something else. So we can go ahead and press the complete task button over here. And let's see what we got to do. Get the cutthroat flag. I believe that is trouble brewing. Let me go check. So, like I thought, the cutthroat flag is in fact from Trouble Brewing, and I don't know if I've mentioned this before, but there's a few types of tasks that I'm really not looking forward to doing, and one of them is in fact Trouble Brewing. Uh, it's just a lot of AFKing. Each game takes 20 minutes, and you get 100 pieces of 8 from it, and just looking at the shop, uh, you can see how many pieces of 8 you actually need to get all of the collection log slots. Um, and it is a lot, which just means a lot of AFKing. Um, it's just not very interesting. Like, I don't mind doing it, and in fact, it'll let me get uh, a little bit of time to edit some videos. But, yeah, we're just gonna go there, AFK. I don't know what I'll show you, but, yeah, 2,000 pieces of 8 for the Cutthroat Flag means I will need to do 20 games, which each game is 20 minutes, so, yeah. Trouble Brewing itself is a really strange minigame where you don't actually get any more points for winning or doing anything actually relevant to playing the minigame. You get up to 100 pieces of 8 per game based on how many resources you deposit, but you can just do all buckets of water and it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter the kind of resource. You just need to put uh, 100 buckets of water in the hopper up here and then you earn your 100 pieces of 8 for that particular game. So. Every game, you just go and get four inventories full of buckets of water, put in the hopper, and then just wait. <laughs> uh, so that's what I'm doing now. Like I said, not super interesting. I don't know exactly how much of this I'll show, but that's what I'll be doing for the next 20 games. So as you can see here, it took me about four minutes to get my 100 buckets of water, which, like I said, is all I really need to do to get my 100 pieces of eight. Uh, I have this little thing here that shows me how many I've done, and you can see this thing here, it says rum. You actually can get more than 100 for every complete rum that your team makes, you get an extra two pieces of eight, but it's generally just considered not worth it. Uh, it takes way too much time for how little reward you get, so the general method is just get 100 buckets and AFK. Uh, I'm actually curious if it'll go over 100 here. Yeah, so you can see, even putting in more buckets of water, my contribution doesn't go up anymore. Capped at 100, so now I wait 16 minutes and do it again. Just past the halfway point here, and I hate trouble brewing. Alright, this is it. Last buckets of the last game. I mean, I still have to AFK for 16 minutes, but we're essentially done. Oh, there we go. Last game. Let me get out my other pieces of 8. And we can go ahead and buy, let me just check to make sure I remember which flag it is. Cutthroat flag, this one, 2,000 pieces of eight. Thank goodness we're done with that. I think I'll save you guys from having to watch any more of that than necessary. Go ahead, complete that one. And let's find out what we're doing next. Oh my god. I hate this game. Well, if you're wondering why this video is going to take so long to come out, uh, that's why. Uh, the full set's going to cost another 2,500 pieces of eight, so I essentially have to do what I just did again, plus some. Yay! I would like it to be known that this is the first time that I've ever even considered rolling a different task, and if I don't do it now, I think you can trust that I'll never do it because this might be the most painful back-to-back -back task I've had. Uh, obviously I wouldn't actually do that, but eh, the thought was there. Um, I'm probably not going to show much of this, 
honestly, the next clip you see is probably going to be when I'm done, so I'll see you then. With the end of that game, I am officially halfway done this task, and I know I said I wasn't going to record anything until I was done, but I actually have a big announcement. Uh, I got accepted into the YouTube Partner Program, so that is pretty cool. Uh, it doesn't really change that much, I'm still going to be making videos, but now if you see ads on them, I might actually make some money off it. And that's all thanks to you guys subscribing and watching and liking and commenting and all that. Uh, it really does help. Even the last video I just put up ended up doing really well. And it said directly it was due to uh, regular viewers' engagement to the videos, which helped promote it to other people. So thank you. It wouldn't be possible without you guys. And I'm just glad that you guys are enjoying the series and that you guys don't want to have to suffer through 18 hours of trouble brewing like I do. And yes, I did the math. The first task took about 8 hours, and this one's going to take about 10 and a half hours, so... Yeah. Hey, there we go. The last game got my 2,500 pieces. Now, if I f did math wrong, and it's actually more than this, I'm going to be really sad. Uh, I don't know. Did it say which one? It didn't, but the picture's green, so I'm going to buy the green one. There we go. Thank goodness I'm done with that. 19 hours of AFK and Trouble Brewing. Uh, let's go get a new task. Hopefully not another one. I looked and there is actually a couple more Trouble Brewing tasks on the medium tier, so let's just hope that I don't get one. Okay, good. So the giant egg sack is actually an interesting little task for me here. You get it from killing Seracnus which is a boss I've never actually killed before. And the first real boss of the account, I mean, I did kill some Obor for beginner clues and some crazy archeologist, but this gonna be the first sort of real boss that I kill, even though it is somewhat easy compared to the other ones. Uh, yeah, I'm excited to go learn the mechanics and figure out what armor is gonna be the best for it. And we'll just go get right into it. As far as the boss drops go, uh, not the most interesting drop table. I'm going after the giant egg sack. There's also the jar and the pet and the cudgel. The cudgel would actually be an interesting weapon to have. Uh, it's a crush weapon, 65 attack requirement that doesn't use charges. So it could actually be useful in some places for me right now. But obviously we're going after the much more likely giant egg sack. Uh, yeah. I can't believe that I'm actually doing this, but... Seracnus is weak to crush, and I don't have a crush weapon, so I'm gonna buy a dragon mace. <laughs> I would have never thought I would ever use this weapon, but here we go. Uh, this is what I'm gonna be using: uh, high range or high magic defense, so ranged armor, crush weapon, high strength bonus, prayer bonus. Yeah. Well, I got everything ready. I got my inventory set up. I got my thralls, I got my gear, I got my weapon, all ready to go. And then I see this thing in the chat box that says, Avoid world hopping or dangerous activities while we investigate world issues. So I guess I'll go to bed and do this tomorrow. Well, I would like it to be known that my disappointment is immeasurable and my day is ruined. Uh, last night when I said there were some issues with the servers, they had to do some rollbacks. Which means... I'm not actually done at Trouble Brewing yet again. I need to do five more games to redo the task to get my set. So I'm back here. Uh, I'm very sad, but that's just the way it is. So I'm going to real quick do that and you're not going to see any of it. Just pretend this never happened. But yeah, I got to say this must be the worst episode of the series so far. Not bad as in, like, actually bad. Bad as in just, like, funny bad. Everything that could go wrong has gone wrong, and the things that have gone right have just been not very interesting. God, I hope that Seracnus is interesting. Otherwise, I don't know how to redeem this episode. Alright, here we go. Done the task again. Rebuying the outfit. Alright, let's go kill the spider. I mentioned previously that the next time I was going to do anything combat related that I could go and unlock chivalry now that I got 60 prayer from my slayer grind. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. 
Uh, I'm glad I didn't decide to do this last night like I was thinking about doing because I would have had to do it again. Oh, we're done already. There we go, King's Ransom done. Uh, I still have to go and do the Night Waves training grounds, but yeah, that was super easy. Wow, 33,000 defense, nice. All right, and this should be it once I hit two damage on Sir Lancelot. Done with the Knight's Training Ground, Waves, whatever. There we go. Access to Chivalry. Hell yeah. Huge XP drops. Love to see it. I didn't get my recorder on in time, but this guy was using a Granite Maul to kill Sir Arachnus, and I freaking love that. That's some true 07 vibes. A seven tick attack weapon to kill a boss. <laughs> my guy over here let me take his world so we're just going right in so like i said before never done this boss before but as far as i can tell you pretty much just need to switch prayers oh i should summon my thrall you pretty much just need to switch prayers every time he does his thing to go from range so he doesn't hit you while you're trapped and then back to melee once you get in melee range and the guy that i read said just ignore his ads they don't do enough damage to be relevant just kill the boss so that's what i'm gonna do Okay, I definitely brought too many prayer potions. I think the guide that I was reading thought that I had better gear and wouldn't take as much damage and might be able to get, like, multiple kills per trip, which, uh, in this case, definitely not true. Um, so next time I do this, I'm going to bring less prayer potions and more food. Hey, first kill, though. Let's see what we get. Uh, grubby key. All right. Now that I'm actually getting into some bossing tasks, I'm going to need to do Taibo Wano Trio anyway to unlock being able to fish Karambwams. Uh, I'm just buying some right now for this task, but I need it for my Hasta and I need it for combo food, so that's something I'm going to have to do in the future. Jesus, that kill was scary. Hey, that was an easy kill. And room play body. I decided that even though I may have enough supplies to go for another kill on this trip, uh, I'm just going to do one kill trips for now. If I don't get the kill, this is just a massive waste of supplies, and it's not that much of a run. So yeah, I'm just going to do one trip kills for now, save a bit of supplies, and guarantee I get the kill every time. A fourth kill coming in for some Chaos Runes. And there we go, kill number five. See what we get. Cosmic runes. And another one. Hey, the egg sack. We're done. So wheat. Uh, I had just changed my strategy too, where I started killing the melee guys whenever I got uh, webbed. And I couldn't hit the boss anyway. I just started hitting the melee guys. Which makes a lot of sense. I don't know why I didn't do that to begin with. But we're done. Nice. And I'm just now realizing that I never actually explained what the giant egg sack is. But uh, you can take... I believe you need a knife. Yes, you do. Uh, you can take a knife and cut it open. And you can only do this whilst in a bank. Interesting. Uh, empty. There we go. 100 red spider's eggs. That's it. But still. Cool. Let's go see what we're doing next video. After that disaster of a video with all the problems I had with the rollback and the back-to-back -back trouble brewing, I'm glad I got to end with a pretty fun task, got to learn a new boss, and didn't take too long. So that was nice. We can complete that one, and let's see what we're doing next time. One unique champion scroll. Interesting. I'll have to look into what I'm going to do for that. As I just alluded to, that's going to be it for this video. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed even with all the troubles, I still think it'll make for a good video. So, yeah, with that being said, don't forget to do all the YouTube things. Like the video, comment, whatever. And yeah, see you next time.